Hey everybody, welcome to Green Fish Nation. I'm your host, John Suits, and today we're going to be talking fishing knots, so you guys stay tuned. Guys, today we're going to be talking about the Palomar knot, the FG knot, the Uni knot, the Trilene and improved Trilene knot, a drop shot knot, and a snail knot. Also, we'll be talking about the first knot that I ever learned as a fisherman, which was the clinch knot and then the improved clinch knot. So I got a uh, little rudimentary fish hook here I made out of uh, just a coat hanger. And I got some uh, little braided line here from the local hardware store. We're gonna talk about the uh, the clinch knot and the improved clinch knot. This was the first knot that I learned as a young kid, six or seven years old, uh, how to tie my first fishing knot. So it's real simple. You just want to run your line through the eye of your hook. I come down and I twist my line about four or five times. And for the simple clinch knot, you just want to go right back through that hole there and pull that down tight. And that will give you your simple clinch knot. You'd want to cut your tag end off, leave about a quarter of an inch. Uh, the only difference in the improved and the simple clinch knot is, is the improved, once you go through the, uh, the eyelet there, you're gonna have a little line left uh, from where you come down from the top. You wanna take that and pull that through and then pull your line down and that's gonna give you the improved clinch knot. Uh, that's a lot stronger knot. It has a lot less uh, potential for line slip. I uh, use this quite a bit uh, in my fishing. Uh, so that works pretty good with uh, mono. It works good with fluorocarbon. Uh, so if you guys have never tried that knot, you might want to give it a try. All right, guys, the next knot we're going to talk about is going to be the trilene knot and improved trilene knot. Uh, it's going to work pretty much the same way you're going to go through, except for making your wraps, you're going to go through again. So you've went through the eye of the hook twice, and then you're going to make your wraps. I'll go about three times on this line, and then you're going to Pull that back through. Make sure you're lined up good here and pull that down. And that's gonna give you your trilene knot. You can see here, you have two lines on the hook eye versus the one with the, the, the improved. And it's the same thing with it. You wanna just uh, go back through the opening like you did on the, uh, Im the improved clinch knot. You'll go back through that opening on this improved trilene knot and you'll do the same thing, pull it down. Uh, this line doesn't slide as good as monofilament or fluoro or the other, but you'll get a real pretty knot. It's, it's not very pretty with this, but uh, that's kind of what your improved trilene knot looks like. So if you guys haven't tried that, that's a very strong knot. You got twice as much line here through the eye of your hook. So uh, try that. And if you have any questions about how to tie this or how to use it, just uh, drop me a comment below and we'll take care of that for you. All these you're gonna wanna trim your tag end off too and leave those nice and clean so your bait works, works better and you don't grab a bunch of moss and uh, grass and stuff like that when you're fishing this through the grass, okay? So you guys stay tuned and we'll talk about the Palomar knot next. All right, guys, the next knot we're gonna talk about is the Palomar knot. It's real simple. What I like to do is just try to run me some line through there, uh, go back through the eye of the hook, get you a good square knot tied up there, and then you'll have a loop want to bring your hook through it. And then I try to pull up my lines uh, 
even if I can. Again, like I said, this line doesn't slide as well, but you'll get the general, the general gist of it. Pull those lines up nice and smooth. Make sure you are in the, the eye of the hook with both of those and pull that and you got a good strong knot that's self tightening. Uh, like I said, this works on multiple lines. Uh, you can use that on mono. You can use it on braid. You can use it on floor carbon. It's a great knot. You'll want to trim your, uh, trim your end off, your slack end. Uh, I tie this exact same knot, so we'll cover the this exact knot for the uh, for the drop shot knot as well. I would tie this Palomar knot, and the only difference is, is I would bring my uh, this would be my line going up to my rod, and this would be my line going down to my weight. I want to bring that with the hook bend up and I want to pull that down. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna help you keep that hook upright in an upright position for your drop shot. This would be going to your rod and this would be going to your knot, uh, your weight at the bottom. And you can cut that off at whatever length you want for a power shot or you could go down further for a drop shot. If you see your fish are suspending, you know, about two foot off the bottom, uh, you might want to try to leave yourself a couple of feet of uh, line down there for your uh, worm to kind of suspend at the level that those fish are at. So you guys stay tuned and we're going to work on a snail knot next. All right, guys, the next knot we're going to work on, I uh, use it specifically uh, when I'm setting up a uh, punch rig or a flipping rig, uh, use it with a, a straight shanked hook. Uh, and you'll understand why when I tell you this, uh, you always want to bring your line in through the eye of the hook. You got your hook facing here. I call this the front of the hook. You want to come through there. And then I leave myself plenty of slack. This goes up to my rod, okay? And then what I want to do is I want to double my line up here, like so. So I've got that doubled up. And then I'm going to route my line. This is what they call a simple, simple snail knot. This might be kind of difficult to do by myself with no rod holding the other end. But I'm going to make multiple wraps around the uh, shank of the hook. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go through, through this. Let me wrap it a couple more times. We'll see how we can do with this. Line may be too big, but what, what the idea is to pull that, that line back up through there, like so. All right, if you'll notice, it's through the front of the hook. So that hook is actually, actually the eye of this hook is bent back a little bit so let me fix it straight like it should be so that hook will actually kind of sit in a forward position uh, when you're flipping when you set that hook that's going to bring that hook up like this into that fish's jaw uh, that's the snail knot and what i would do is i i like to put a bead on here and then i'll put like a one ounce tungsten weight or ounce and a half depending on how thick how heavy the cover is Got a little tongue tied there, you have to excuse me. Uh, and then I'll put a bobber stop on there and then I'll slide that bobber stop down. And I like to leave my bobber stop about an eighth inch from the weight. And that gives that uh, bead a little time to move up and down and you can work your rod up and down once you flip into that cover and your weight sinks. If the fish don't pick it up on the fall, I just jig it a couple of times. It bangs that glass bead up against the head of that uh, hook and it gives a little noise there to attract the fish, but that's a snail knot. Now guys, we're gonna to get to uh, tying some lines together and I'm gonna to try to uh, do this with this white line. It may be difficult to see, but I, it's big enough. I think you'll, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Again, like I said, if you don't, you can always drop me a comment. Uh, 
and uh, we'll figure it out together, okay? So you guys stay tuned for line to line knots coming up next. Our next two knots are gonna be line to line knots, like if you're gonna be using a braid to a floral or a mono leader, or you can tie braid to braid, or you can tie mono to floral, or floral to mono, or mono to mono, floral to floral. It's just a knot to knot uh, line knot. Uh, there's two different kinds, there's the uni knot. And then there's the FG knot. So you guys, uh, let's watch this here. So you've got two, you got two lines here, basically. You want about a 12 inch tail and you want to make a loop here like so. And then I like to go around it about five to six times. I'm probably only going to do this about three or four just for demonstration purposes. So it'll actually slide and tie. There's two. Three. And there's four. All right, what I'm gonna do is just kinda pull that down. I'm not gonna cinch it up real tight yet. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing. I'm gonna make a loop here in my line. And I'm gonna go a few times around that one, two, three, and one more makes four. All right, so that gives us the line to line. And I'm gonna pull that knot down and start to snug it up. You'll need to lubricate these with some saliva, okay? So that's what you look like. You got your loop around your white line and tie it off and your loop around your black line and tie it off. And then you're gonna take these and pull these, get them snugged up pretty good. And then you're gonna pull them just like this. And that's gonna be your line to line knot. Uh, you're gonna trim these tag ends off here We'll go ahead and do that just so you guys can see what it looks like. These are not the best scissors in the world for this rope, but you'll get the idea anyway. Make sure you cut off the right line. Don't cut off your main line or, or the leader that you're trying to, to use or you'll have to start over again. So that's what the finished product looks like. That's line to line knot. And I try to cut these off just as close as I can. But like I said, these scissors don't work real well. I got that one pretty close. And this makes a really good line to line knot for you guys that are tying two lines together of different makes or of the same, okay? So the next knot we'll talk about here in just a second is the FG knot. So I'll get that set up and I'll be right back with you guys, okay? All right, guys, our last knot that we're gonna talk about today here on Greenfish Nation is one that I use the most when I'm tying a leader to a braid. Uh, we'll use this black line as our braid. And then we'll use this white line as our leader because we would have green or black braid. And then we would have a fluorocarbon leader. It's real easy, so you're gonna double your braid over. And this is a real important step right here, guys. However you enter this knot, you must exit, okay? So we entered through the bottom. And then I'm gonna wrap this. Uh, I would normally wrap it anywhere from 10 to 15 times uh, on a regular knot. So I went five times here. You can see I entered through the bottom. So I'm gonna exit through the top and I'm simply just gonna lubricate that and pull that knot back and tighten that thing down. And then uh, you would wanna take and tie a regular, leave your tag in a little longer here and tie you a regular square knot with that. Uh, in the fly fishing world, you would do that and you would leave that about a quarter of an inch long and you could have you a strike indicator. But in the bass fishing world, I, 
I want that to go through my rod eye as smooth as possible. So then I would take and I would cut that off just as close as I could get it. And then I've got a tag in here and the same thing with it. I'm gonna try to cut it off. I'm gonna try to lean up against that knot as much as I can and cut that thing off as close as I can so I get the most smooth transition I can through my, my rod. But this is the FG knot. There is a multitude of knots out there. Uh, these are mainly the ones that we use on the boat. I've had really good luck with all of them. Uh, I can't say the last time I remember that I broke a fish off because of knot failure. Uh, they have good uh, line retention, good knot strength. Uh, if you guys have any questions whatsoever about any of these knots, feel free to contact us. Leave us a comment. I want to thank you again for spending your time with us here at Greenfish Nation. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, I would appreciate that. Until next time, guys, tight lines.